this object is called silver poetry ring, which is inspired by the phenomenon of a spring fever, which is representing the early spring forest floor. These amazing plants start gushing out on top of each other after a long, cold winter. I was actually inspired by the making process of shortest Japanese poetry, which is a tanka, which is 31 syllable to represent the beauty in your surrounding. So I designed it to create 31 variation of components to assemble into this elaborate organic phenomenon in the early spring in Wales. This piece is made out of all hand-forged components, 31 variation, 9 kilograms pure silver, and then TIG welded entirely from the beginning to the end. When I'm making things, I don't design first, so I just add on the units I've created. The final outcome is almost a gift from nature itself. I'm going to demonstrate now, is a, this is a forging hammer which is uh, very old, more than 100 years old apparently. It got slightly carved head, so it's easier to stretch the silver. So as you can see, I'm just stretching the volume of material towards the tip. So this is the cold forging because uh, once it's hit, you can't bend it. When I wanted to connect this boss end of the piece was very hard because uh, it was almost jigsaw puzzle where the link was uh, almost impossible. But I'm not going to let you know where I started. It's the trade secret. There is somewhere where I started, I remember, and where I ended because it's hidden. So it's secret. <laughs> So this is TIG welder, this is the torch, and this tungsten bit is basically heating the tip. The four silver components have to be attached to the vise, nice and steady. And then the second piece is uh, gently hold it on a the plier, then basically fuse it together. Then once it's everything's grown in a certain size, I remove from vise, then carry on welding process onto the copper surface. Silver is actually naturally white in colour, but if you polish it, it became really like a miller. Lots of people polish that silver beaker of silver ball, so I wanted to go opposite, but at the same time I wanted to use this shiny property to basically compare the aesthetic. These partly polished area sort of lifts the 3D-ness out of it. So that was my intention. This is uh, one of the technique I use to make silver poetry ring. So I cut them into short, unit. Basically, this silver is placed into the frame, never too far, never too close. It's about a centimetre. Did you see it? So it's just about holding the amount of a silver. Then quench it in the water. It's pretty handy. I love this process. It's amazing the museum, like such as a uh, Temple Newsome, is acquiring these pieces because uh, 
it will be show, you know, shown to the much larger number of people, which is a, such an honour. It's an incredible feeling, especially this piece is almost a showcase of what, what my making process is. You, you won't even believe that the beginning of this component was the almost the same material, silver rod or wire, but completely different just by simple techniques such as hammering. I want everyone to appreciate the fact that such a simple technique can create this elaborate, complicated look of work. It would be fantastic. <laughs>